Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. This week, I'm going to be getting a Japanese Lolita makeover in Tokyo. That's right, you might just see me in some pink. So last year on our Japan trip, I got a Tokyo makeover, where we explored some of the current street fashion trends seen in the Harajuku neighborhood, which is pretty much the fashion epicenter of the city, with many clothing boutiques, high-end department stores, and street photographers ready to snap shots of any fashionable people walking by, including this guy, who's rocking it. Now, the Harajuku area is also strongly associated with some of the most well-known and frequently talked about Japanese fashion subcultures, including Lolita, which, to put it shortly, is a very poofy and frilly style inspired by vintage fashions from Victorian England and Rococo France. And though it is very different from what I usually wear, insert reference photo of a bat here, I am very interested in trying it out. Because besides being a very striking style, it has also become an increasingly worldwide phenomenon, with Lolita tea parties and Harajuku fashion walks held all around the globe. So this year, while we're in Japan, we're going to be doing a full-on deep dive into Lolita style and its community. And to do so, we're going to be joined by our friend and guide Rin Rin Dahl, who is a Tokyo-based YouTuber as as well as a working Lolita model and enthusiast. And together, we will hopefully be able to come up with a head-to-toe Lolita look. All right, so let's go and get Lolita-fied. So our first step, once we got to Japan, was to meet up with Rin Rin, who arrived at our hotel in full Lolita regalia. Hello everyone, my name is Rin Rin, and I've been doing Lolita modeling for about 10 years now. Thank you so much for coming, Rin Rin, to our hotel room. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I don't know why I made it weird. That. I made it weird, sorry. And before going shopping for our outfit, I wanted to figure out more of what Lolita is all about. Now, Lolita fashion as we know it today has been around since the 90s, inspired by a variety of earlier Japanese fashion trends and visual K rock bands, and also notably bears no relationship to the 1950s novel of the same name. As we mentioned before, Lolita draws heavily from Victorian and Rococo aesthetics, with the style goal being to blend feminine, sophisticated, almost aristocratic looks with whimsical fantasy elements and a dash of cute. So there's a lot of lace, corsets, ruffles, and over-the-top accessories, with a couple of notable style inspirations being Marie Antoinette and Alice from Alice in Wonderland. And per Rin Rin, one of the biggest defining qualities of the Lolita look is the overall shape. Basically this sort of cupcake silhouette, a lot of fluff on the bottom. So petticoats and crinolines are pretty essential. Cupcake silhouette, keep that in mind. But contrary to what my first impression of Lolita was, pastel colors are actually not that essential, as there are many subgenres of Lolita fashion that include some of the same characteristics but have very different moods. So you could go from anything from goth to punk to the sweet style, which is what I'm wearing, or a pop style. There's so many styles. So while I was kind of expecting I would end up with something like what Rin Rin was wearing, it turns out that there are a lot of other options. So I could wear an all black outfit and still be in Lolita. Yes. That's intriguing. Now, one of the most common questions that people ask about Lolita is why do people dress like this? And a lot of Lolitas seem to say the same thing, and it's quite a simple answer. It makes them happy. It's fun for them. And they like to express themselves with their fashion. Rin Rin said that when she put on her first Lolita outfit and looked in the mirror, I just thought this clicked. This is how I would like to see myself. It's very nice to love what you're wearing and how you're feeling at the same time. And they often mention that part of the appeal is that they're not dressing for other people's approval. Mm -hmm. It's definitely your clothes for yourself. I don't think it's very like uh, sexy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not to catch a mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like that. Mm -hmm. You're just having it. fun wearing what you want to wear, basically. Yeah, exactly. You awesome. selected the trend you want to wear. Now that sounded pretty familiar to me. Yeah. yeah, your Lolita is Tyler's gym shorts. Ah. He did hey. not wear them to attract a mate. 
I get it. <laughs> he found one despite it. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> hey. Obviously, there's more time and effort that goes into a full Lolita outfit than Tyler's 20-year-old pair of gym shorts, but I think the idea of dressing in something that makes you feel good definitely resonates with me. Reinsert photo of Bat here. So with those guidelines sort of stylistically and emotionally set, it was about time for us to start building our outfit. And our quest started in Harajuku, at the La Forêt department store, whose lowest floor, B1.5, is almost entirely dedicated to subculture brands. You can't go wrong on that floor. So I'd like to take you around there, and I've selected a couple shops that have a wide variety so that mm. you can try out different styles. Awesome. We had actually arranged to go to La Forêt before it opened, so we arrived around 8 a.m. in the pouring rain, ready to get our shop on. Our plan was to visit three stores and try on two options at each one. And first up was a biatage. Okay, so we are here at a biatage with Naho, who is one of the shop staff. So this shop focuses on corsets, and they would like people to be closer to it and wear it in their everyday fashion. Naho also mentioned that in addition to selling corsets, they also specialize in antique style clothing and accessories. So what kind of stuff we're gonna be trying on right now? So she says uh, she'd like you to try on a sort of gothic looking style and then a little bit more light colored style. And the gothic look was up first. She wants to add <laughs> this on top. Oh, yes, uh... an overskirt. And besides some ruffly black items, we also needed a corset, of course. And once we had selected that, it was time to try it all on. Uh, would you need help? Um, I'll, I'll call Okay. if I need it. I'll just, you'll hear me yelping. All right. Groaning, perhaps. <laughs> all right, let's do it. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do a dramatic curtain reveal of our outfit because I needed some serious hands-on assistance to get strapped in. Suck it in. Do your worst. <laughs> and from the impression I got from my rib cage, ooh, yeah. I would say Naho likes her laces tight. How is it? Are you okay? Can yeah, you still okay. breathe? But once I was in, I did think the corset tied the whole look together. All right, so this is like look number one. I very much enjoy it. I am very tucked in. Yes. I am cinched. Naho is not messing around. We're just, we're in it. I also do like this kind of like rump look we've got going on here. Yeah. It's sort of, oh, excuse me. It's sort of um, Rococo. Why do I think you're gonna say bootylicious? Oh, no. <laughs> it's kind of like poofylicious, yeah. It's not not bootylicious. Right. In addition to the poofed boot, we also added a bonus choker corset, as well as a slightly askew mini flowered hat. Oh, wow. Hello. I sort of feel like a fashionable, um, who's the lady from Sweeney Todd? Mrs. Lovett. I kind of feel like a fashionable Mrs. Lovett. Like I could be in cahoots with a murderous barber. Definitely. To round out the look, we added a few pieces of jewelry, including this finger thingy. That is something that like a Marvel villain would wear. Yes. Mm. It's kind of like the infinity single ring. It's like the <laughs> infinity <laughs> index finger. As well as this almost fairy-like ear cuff. I'm getting kind of a Lord of the Rings vibe. You just went a little Arwen. Yeah. <laughs> I think with that, they were finally pleased with the amount of things I was wearing. Very good. You like it? Duh. Sticky. And I was also generally pleased. I mean, I definitely feel a little short of breath, but I also feel good in it, so it's hard to say. So that was option number one. Now for our second outfit, Naho put me in a lighter corseted look to give us our first taste of some pastel. Ooh. All right. So this is option number two from a Biotage. Now this isn't necessarily a traditional Lolita silhouette, but it does have some Victorian vibes, especially with the sort of nightgowny duster coat that I could grab and be outraged with. Like I almost feel like I need like a chaise lounge to like faint upon. I'm like scandalized, how dare you? Excuse you. So I would say that it was more of a Victorian pajama look. One thing I will say is that my Cleavage is definitely making an appearance. Magical appearance. I think Naho has created it with her masterful corset skills. Yes. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> She said you you have it already. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was just hiding somewhere much further down. Now, most Lolita looks actually have quite high necklines and don't really feature cleavage. However, since I usually don't have much, I wasn't mad. But though I enjoyed this outfit, I am a big fan of, of like an outer layer. I think that this was more of an alternative Lolita look, so I wasn't sure that this was the one for us. And though we still had the first outfit as one of our possibilities, it was time to continue on to store number two. Okay, so now we are here at Atelier Pierrot, which is actually just like a few sort of steps down from where we just were. And we are here with Mai, who is one of the shop staff today. Now, Atelier Pierrot is a select shop that carries gothic and Lolita items. And when people mention Alice in Wonderland as a style icon, I think you really get a sense of that here with like serious cupcake and Mad Hatter vibes. So let's get started. Yeah. Where should we begin? Yeah. My pretty much immediately grabbed the dress she wanted off the opposite rack, which was a long, layered, dusty lavender gown. So it's a little bit summery because the sleeves are shorter. Mm. I also so feel the is... sort of breathable material. Mm -hmm. yeah. I yeah. like that. So this one first. Okay, perfect. So I was quickly whisked away to the dressing room with my stockings following close behind. We have tights for you. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. Now, one thing to note is that although I usually do okay getting into Japanese sized clothes, my feet are a different story. So I brought a few of my own shoe options from home and Rin Rin and Mai unanimously chose the six inch platform ones, which is fine, but they do also make me a giant. So just everyone be prepared. Oh, I really tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can walk. I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> Super cute. Yeah. yeah. Though at least I was a supposedly cute giant. I like this a lot, actually. It's quite comfortable. I like this sort of like easy, almost like baby doll silhouette. I like the stockings a lot too. The stockings are super cool. They're kind of like Haunted Mansion-y. Next up, Rin Rin outfitted me with some wristicuffs. Now we're matching. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why do these make me feel like a cat? Like I feel like I have paws now. And then I squatted down so they could add a lacy necklace. This is a thigh workout. Mm. Oh, Beautiful. and a mask? For your <laughs> head. Oh, for my head? Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, I'm just leaving the masquerade, sure. so it's just sort of askew. I thought this outfit was really cool, and I did feel kind of like an elegant basketball player sized porcelain doll come to life, which I think is part of how you're supposed to feel with Lolita, like a little vintage and a little fantastical. But Mai and Rin Rin had further plans for me and quickly handed me their pick for our second option. All right. Here we go. Once more into the breach, which was made up of a black blouse and a blue pinafore overdress. Oh, this is cool. I love this one. I feel kind of like a pirate. Yeah. Like a sort of like gothic Lolita pirate. Okay. I feel like I could get into that. I guess this is more of an Elizabeth Swan than an Alice in Wonderland, but there were definitely some fantasy elements at play. Arr. <laughs> Arr. Oh, I need like that single index finger ring from a Beataj. I'll be like, Arr. Oh, a little Captain Hook action. Yeah, exactly. Very good. It's all coming together. But before I could start plundering, my and Rin Rin moved in with the accessories. Do you got any booty for me? <laughs> any loot? Any puffed snacks? Mm. Rin Rin, could we give Sophia an eye patch? Eh, eye patch nai. Is she getting an eye patch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't believe they had an actual eye patch to try on. It's a Lolita eye patch. Oh my God, it's happening. But after the elven ears and infinity index fingers, I guess I shouldn't have been all that surprised. Is this a look? Yeah? It is a look, yeah. Is it? Is it a good look? Is it the look? Unfortunately for me, I don't think it was the look. Is it going from a super kawaii to like meh kawaii? <laughs> <laughs> I prefer no eye patch. Yeah, I think that's probably the call. But minus the eye patch though, I really did like this look. I think this really suits you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the color on it. Mm -hmm. Do you guys like this better than the purple dress? I do. So I think that this outfit might have been moving into the front runner position for us. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're just following. But we still did have one final store left to visit. Okay, so we are here at Angelic Pretty with Aya and Lime, who are two of the shop staff who are gonna be helping us out today. Now, Angelic Pretty is the brand that Rin Rin has been working with for a long time, and they're well known for the sweet Lolita outfits that they sell. And per Aya, Lime, and Rin Rin, the store's motto is, for the little boys and girls inside of us who dream of being princesses. Which I think is a pretty different vibe for me. When I was a little girl, I wanted to be Snow White, who's got the blue and the yellow. But now I'm more of a... Maleficent. Maleficent. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Great. Well, the store looks awesome. Mm -hmm. It's um, very pink, but I'm I'm willing. I'm open and ready and willing. So let's do it. So we started searching for a couple of sweet Lolita options, sort of literally. I love the food on this one. Yeah. Popcorn, cherry soda, and marshmallows. I could yes. get down with that. All right. So why don't we try on this one then? Absolutely. Aya is wearing a similar one too. Oh yeah. yeah. You have the same Different one on. Color. Popcorn, marshmallow, strawberry milk. It's making me hungry. Really <laughs> so they gave me a blouse to put under my pinafore and sent me to the dressing room. Farewell. Look at this giant curtain, Ty. And I gotta say, it was kind of poetic. I went into a giant curtain of pink and I came out as a giant curtain of pink. Ooh. Hello. Wow. This is me. As always, of course, Rin Rin had many accessories for me, including some that were food themed, as well as, surprisingly, some shoes. It fits. My foot is in. It's a Christmas miracle. Yeah. <laughs> and we finished off the outfit with a hair ribbon and a purse. How do you feel? I feel a little warm, mm. but overall, I feel like I'm in the right zone. Like, yeah. I feel like I've got the right elements going. I've got the blouse, I've got the pinafore, I've got something in my hair, mm. the bag, little socks. So I feel like I'm like suited up. And I, once again, love my little wrist cuffs. In fact, I was very impressed by the wide variety of wrist cuffs that Angelic Pretty had to offer. Oh, look at the bunnies. <laughs> Oh, those are awesome. Those are pretty awesome, yeah. Oh, don't look at my naked nails. Everyone has much better <laughs> nails than mine. So with one sweet Lolita look test-driven, we had just enough time to try one more outfit. As at that point, La Foray was starting to open. Ooh. ta Wow. I like this one. You are poofy. I like this one a lot. I'm very yes. poofy. Yes. We added two petticoats. You're double petty right now? I'm double petty. Wow. Petty. <laughs> Apostrophe now I quite liked the elegant fish pattern on this dress. Also, Rin Rin and I, I think, have matching blouses. Yes, we do. Which I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. I then got basically NASCAR pit stopped into my accessories. Double fisting. I'm into it. <laughs> Double wristing. <laughs> Double wristing. That sounds better. Yes. <laughs> which finished off our final outfit option. I was very impressed by just how poofy I was. I feel like. A bell. And I think that really brought together the classic Lolita cupcake aesthetic that we had heard so much about. I actually like this one on you a lot. Me too. I think I actually prefer it to the food one, even though mm -hmm. I am still wanting food. But now that we had tried it, it was time to evaluate all of our possible options and decide on what we wanted to wear. So let's do that. <laughs> so we had tried on a lot of different outfits, but in the spirit of what we had mentioned before about finding something that I would like to wear, that I believe expresses me through it while still being Lolita, we settled on our gothic pirate look from Atelier Pierrot. Now, of course, I'm not literally a pirate, but I feel like in a fairy tale scenario, I'm more of a swashbuckler than a princess. So we went with that one, with a few small tweaks. All right, Rin Rin found me a new shirt and it has a bat wing sleeve. I'm gonna be a pirate bat with no eye patch, but a wing. Pirate. A pirate, pie bat, what? We also added a corset from a beatage. What do you think? I like it a lot. Yeah, I like this one. Can you breathe? According to no. As well as a few more pieces of jewelry. I feel like I'm marrying you now. <laughs> All right, so after a little bit of shopping, I think we have the final outfit in these two very large, almost yes. sacks. Yours yes. is a bag, mine yes. is more of a sack. I'm so excited. I'm it's excited too. Cute. So next up, we're gonna be doing makeup and hair and completing the look. 
So the next day, we rounded up our outfit haul and headed over to the Shinjuku area to Shantagram. Okay, so we are here at Shantagram, which is a hair salon that has a large Lolita clientele because of the styles that they do, with Linda, who is a hairstylist, as well as a Lolita herself. And Linda was gonna be tackling my mane and giving it an appropriate do. And as for my makeup, Rin Rin was actually going to be the one to scale the mountain that is my face. What? Rin Rin is today outfitted in a gothic, would you call it a gothic Lolita style? Pretty goth, I think. Pretty gothic Lolita style. Mm. <laughs> Linda Gothina. says yes. Linda yes. says, yes, goth, yes. Just to kind of match my vibe. So I popped on my outfit, minus the corset, and stuffed my petticoated self into a chair. I'm just like, kind of like, <laughs> floofing out of it. I'm kind of like bread in a can right now. So I could get my makeup did. Now Rin Rin's vision for the look was something dramatic and purple to complement my dark outfit. Now I think overall, Lolita makeup follows general Japanese makeup trends, but just more exaggerated. There are some pretty extreme looks out there, but I think the general rule is that you just don't want your face to get lost in your bonnet. It's just all about balance. So first up, Rin Rin used some purple and gold eyeshadow to give me a bit of a smoky eye. Let me see. Cute. And she was pretty liberal with the dark shadow all around the socket. We are going for that sunken eye look. So the jet lag works with it perfectly. Yes, you'll have natural. Natural bags. Yeah. <laughs> natural goth. And she also added some red blush, like really high up my cheeks, to emphasize that pulled an all-nighter vibe. After that, we popped on some long fake lashes. This is my come hither look. And finally added a dark blotted lip with a faint bit of gold at the center. All right, so what do you think? We're done. Oh, wow. This I see a lot yeah. right here. I love it. Yes. I look so different. Amazing. It looks great. You did a great job. Thank you. Yeah, I love it. Hello. And with our makeup look done, our next step was the hairstyle. So Linda, what's our plan for the hair today? Today it's corset hair. Is that kind of like what Rin Rin has with the ribbons? Yes. Oh. So I'll have my hair be corseted, my waist be corseted, and my ankles be corseted corseted everywhere. Did. Now for this look, Linda basically started separating my hair into multiple braids and then lacing those braids together with ribbon. So my scalp almost resembled a bodice. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so you're like corseting my braids together. Yeah. I get it now. This is a current hair trend that's popular amongst Lolitas that Linda does a lot. I am terrible at shoelaces and tying my shoes and anything involving shoelaces. Yeah. So this is way out of my league. <laughs> Now, besides corset hair, there are a couple of other staple Lolita hair looks that you see a lot, notably the Hime or princess haircut, which is basically like straight across bangs with two longer side locks that frame your face, as well as wigs, hats, and general headpieces. But I think in our case, we were getting away with just doing a lot of ribbons. And aside from those, Linda was also curling the bottom part of my hair that wasn't corseted. I'm being doused in hair spray and I like it. <laughs> Smells like apples. And with that, my hair was done. Oh wow! Oh my god, look at the back of my head. It was ridiculous. I'm very disappointed that I didn't say that in person. I don't even understand what's happening there. But Linda's skills are ridiculous. How did you, where does one end and the other begin? See, I told you, I, this is way out of my league. So with my head fully dressed, it was time to put on the rest of my outfit. All right, I'm, I'm preparing myself mentally. They're preparing the corset, I'm preparing my lungs. Uh, you should hold on to something. Yeah, I'll turn around. <laughs> I think I should have realized when Linda was doing my hair that she really wasn't gonna take any prisoners with the corseting. Is it all right? Yeah, no, it's great. Okay. I like how you have a giant fake butt right now, so. I think that's like a late Victorian style. Oh yeah. <laughs> we'll look it up when we get back to the US. <laughs> From there, we added on our jewelry and stepped into my very high heels to finish off the ensemble. How do I look, Ty? You're like an avatar thing. <laughs> a Navi? You're like a Navi, yeah. You're like giant and blue. Oh, wow. I can't see my head, but I love the outfit. After getting a better view of the whole look, I was actually feeling way more Tim Burton than James Cameron. Right now, because you're in like a hair salon, it is kind of like you're from Sweetie Todd. Exactly! All right, Linda, you and I are gonna go into the murdering business together. 
<laughs> Rin Rin jumped in to explain exactly what we were proposing, and what I will say is that Linda seemed kind of down. <laughs> yeah? Oh, she says yes. Yes. I knew there was a reason we got along. So having been fully Lolita-fied, we bid Linda adieu and ventured out into the world. Or more specifically, back to Harajuku. All right. So this is my final Lolita look. I think we ended up with a really cool goth Lolita bat pirate look. Yeah. Rin Rin, will you? Yeah, Rin Rin's giving me a thumbs up. I was like, will you validate me? She says yes. <laughs> and in addition to our corseted pirate base, our look also included the all-important petticoat, these pattern tights, a garter with a bow that fell down a fair few times, some black wrist cuffs, one ring, and two necklaces, which we matched with our sunken eye makeup look, our corseted hair, and a pair of gray-colored contacts. I actually feel quite good in the outfit. The corset is a little tight and the shoes are a little intimidatingly tall, <laughs> but I'm feeling quite at home in the bat wings. And I'm also loving these wrist cuffs. I just keep like squirreling around. Beyond feeling like this was a very personalized Lolita look that I connected with, I definitely had enough trappings of 19th century pirate to really get me into character. Swab the poop deck, as they say. That's a phrase, right? Sure. Shiver me timbers? Definitely a phrase. Shiver me platform stilettos. But though I was feeling the outfit, like emotionally, there were some physical elements to contend with. Look at these tiny steps that you're making, Ta. Like trying really hard not to tip over. I'm a mountain goat with construction in the background. <laughs> and also not to trip over my own feet on the stairs. Ha <laughs> ha! Victory is mine. Surprisingly though, the corset wasn't really giving me that many problems. I'm actually doing quite well in the corset. I'm standing up straight. Give me a few more hours, we'll see how I feel, but right now I'm feeling pretty good. Now, while we were in Harajuku, we wanted to take our own street snap style photos of us in our gothic Lolita looks, but my shoes once more posed a challenge. If I have like one foot up and one foot back, then it kind of evens out, right? Yeah. This is like the perfect place for you two to take this photo together. Exactly, we're slightly on like a slope. <laughs> <laughs> and once we had those under our belt, or should I say on our phones, it was time to move on to a common Lolita activity, afternoon tea. Now, as Rin Rin mentioned in our interview, afternoon tea is a pretty typical activity for the Lolita community. And it gives everyone a chance to dress up a little bit nicer and mm. to go and have an enjoyable evening or lunch together. That said, it seems like it's less about the actual tea, and it's more about showing off your proverbial Sunday best outfit and hanging out. It does very much fit the aesthetic. Yeah. I would like to take a lot of pictures yeah. with afternoon tea sets with a tea. Here's the twist, you only talk about the beauty guru community. Yeah. <laughs> it's not supposed to be that kind of tea. It's supposed to be real tea. And that's the tea. Oh my god. <laughs> and TikTok has made its way into our video. Now, Rin Rin had made us reservations at a place called Q-Pot Cafe in Udahara, which is a very charming shop that has a lot of Lolita complimentary backgrounds and seating areas. Oh, did I mention? This month, this place has cat afternoon tea. Cat themed. There's no actual cats here. We thought it was a cat cafe for a second, but- For a second. There's a photo of a real cat. As a part of the cat tea, while we were deciding on what cat themed snacks we should get. Oh my god, look! It's so cute! We were presented with matching cat jewelry to wear during our tea party. It's quite the contrast with your other necklace. It's yes. Sort of, yeah, it's sort of like Emily Dickinson and her cats. <laughs> That's dark. And very quickly, our food and drink arrived. Are you having fun, Saf? Yes. I'm it, excited about this. Is tea time all you could ever hope for? It is. There's less tea than I thought there would be. <laughs> There's more coffee and more food. And by food, I mean waves and waves of sweet snacks. Oh my wow. Wow, this is a fun day. <laughs> we get the whole makeup and we get to do this. I had a really great time at our small tea party, and I think Rin Rin was correct in that it just felt like the right place to be while all dressed up. There are actually also other girls dressed in Lolita here, so this seems to be the spot. Apparently, some combination of afternoon tea, gram worthy treats, aesthetic surroundings, and cats brings all the Lolitas to the yard. Look, we're cats. 
But eventually, after finishing our tea set, posing at the surrounding booths, and exploring the other floors of the cafe, Look, there's a giant mushroom. Yeah, wow, look at that. It was time for us to say farewell to Q-Pot. Hi, Saki, change your shoes up. Shh. Don't tell anyone. And I think my shoes coming off kind of marked the beginning of the end of my first Lolita experience. Okay, so was it a successful Lolita day, Rimrin? Yes, very successful. Overall, I really dug my time in our Lolita outfit. There are a lot of elements to this outfit, and keeping track of all of the elements is definitely a task, but I really enjoy it. As a former theater kid myself, I had a great time playing what I felt was like a very meticulous and extravagant round of dress up. My ribs are hurting a little, and my feet are definitely hurting, but my wrists are warm and cuffed. <laughs> so as for Lolita's style overall, I definitely understand the appeal. I mean, the outfits and the accessories are awesome. But beyond the actual clothing, what's interesting to me is how Lolita fashion brings people together. Because the emotion and enthusiasm behind the style becomes like a shared passion. As Rin Rin says, It's like having friends in different countries mm -hmm. that you might have never met before, but mm -hmm. you have this already strong bond. I love that it's fashion plus community. And to be honest, Honest, the tea party was pretty tasty, so I get why people like that too. So when all is said and done, I could see myself wearing this look again, especially if Rin Rin comes to visit us, or you know, maybe if I wanted to dress up for a performance of the Pirates of Penzance. I'm tired. Let's wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for watching, and once again, a big thank you to Rin Rin and to everyone who made our Lolita makeover possible. If you liked that video, make sure to shamash that like button, and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to shamash that subscribe button. Here are my social media handles, and a big shout out to Hoosier Sarah for watching. Thanks for watching, Hoosier Sarah, and I will see you guys a next time.